Welcome back to the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Kevin Sully, joined by Lincoln Shrike. FlowTrackPodcast at gmail.com is the email address. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and on the website, flowtrack.org slash flowtrackpodcast. Lincoln, good morning. I can't see the front of your hat. Your hat is just yeah, sitting on top of your head in a weird way. Oh, it's a cup hat. Okay, confirmed. Yeah. It is a cup hat. Yeah. The angle I was looking through, I, I just couldn't get it to, to look right. Uh, anytime I wear a hat, I know people mostly are probably listening to this on their their podcast apps, um, which so this, this segment will uh, not be very entertaining. But anytime I wear a hat, it's a good signal that I woke up with some significant bedhead. So mm -hmm. it's not just because I'm excited about baseball. Really, the only hats I own are related to Chicago sports. Um, so it's just a pragmatic, practical decision, not necessarily because I'm really excited about baseball or anything like that. Is anybody excited about baseball? Uh, yeah, just like anything, I mean, there's always going to be skepticism about can they have a can they have a season in the midst of a pandemic? But is anyone excited about it? It's going to be different. I mean, it's better than it was a month ago when it didn't seem like billionaires were willing to part with, you know, twenty five million dollars or whatever it was between 30 people. Uh, but um, I don't know. There's so much going on that it's hard to even focus. Um with with things and i i i'm i guess i'm modestly excited for it but i'm also about to have, you know my wife's about to have a, a baby so how much of the 60 game season am i actually going to be able to watch I, I i don't really i really know well you always sweated over game 131 as a cubs fan oh, oh so. typically yeah the whole season is i mean it's actually been a little bit of a relief i mean i i treat every game as if it's has a level of importance so i'm a, i'm kind of a crazy baseball fan in that sense so maybe with it being you know whatever it is 60 percent shorter of a season there's mm -hmm. a chance it'll be even more intense but i i don't know it's been a to say the least it's been a weird year so there's a chance baseball kind of goes out and i don't really care about it this year have they thought about going the college football model just 12 games and you don't play everybody for baseball and then go right to the playoffs I didn't know that was that was happening. I I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how it's all going to work out. I don't know. Yesterday you go there from was sixty a, games down to twelve uh, games. It's just it's mm -hmm. the next logical step if you're going to cut games. It's like man, I, the Cubs better beat the Cardinals because this is one of twelve games they have this year. Right. I follow a number of Cubs reporters, and yesterday there was a minor issue that is obviously very important during a pandemic, and when they're trying to keep infections low but two first basemen accidentally shared a it's they they passed a glove back and forth without the glove being sanitized so it was like a minor controversy it's just like little issues mm. like this in a weird time where you read this and any other time you'd be like what is going on but uh in in, in the pandemic it, I, it it can be a serious issue we do have track, and the mm, 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 in, inspiration games are today. So by the time you listen to this, the inspiration games are over. So we're going to recap that tomorrow, or should I say Gordon and Lincoln are going to recap that mm. tomorrow with their usual chemistry that you can just feel through your headphones or AirPods. But I mm. want to talk about what's going to happen on Friday, which is okay. another Bowerman meet, and it's – it's going to be good. It looks like it's going to be good again. We have, as expected, Schweizer and Houlihan running a 5,000. And on the men's side of things, Mohamed and Lopez Lavong, who ran the 1,500 last time, they will be running a 5,000 as well. Don't know the other events. I don't know if there are any other events. I'm not sure how it's going to work. But just based on how they did things last time, you assume it's all going to be set up in a way that there will be official times. And people will be running fast. What are you? What are you most looking forward to seeing? Uh, Bowerman meet part two. I'm going to be fascinated on the men's side to see how fast Mohamed can go. I think he's done a lot of the pacing work for this group. Famously, he paced the the twelve fifty eight two thirteen flat races last year in September before getting a bronze medal. He's got a twelve fifty eight PR. Uh, I, I have to think he can he can go faster than that. I I, I really expect somebody to run twelve fifty five. Um, you know, Lopez ran thirteen flat last year, and I don't think that was a perfect race for him. Anytime you win USA's, you 
you assume somebody can run about that. I mean, he beat Chalimo. Chalimo's run twelve fifty seven. So I, uh, I, I, I think that that they're gonna not, not scare the American record at twelve fifty one or anything. Or twelve. What, what is the American record? Fifty three or fifty one? I want to say fifty three, but okay, you caught me. They're out. not gonna. They're, didn't happen. I, I, obviously, that would have that. Yeah, that's fine. They, Lemong, I mean. Uh, uh, Mohamed's Canadian, so he's not going to break the American record. Barring some weird fusion of the countries in between today and tomorrow. Uh, but but Lopez, I expect to, to run in the 1250s, uh, which I would, would be fascinating. The women's side, though, is, is the big story, right? Because it's going to be the American record holder right now, Shelby Houlihan, trying to break her record while also playing a little defense against her teammate, making sure Krista Swizer doesn't one up her like she did in Boston. Um, that's a tough record. I know their times from the three K equate, if if even though that's not a perfect science, to faster than fourteen thirty four. But that one, when you're not in the midst of a season, is, is going to be tough. I, I do think one of the women will break it, um, and I think Shelby's going to answer back and, and run maybe one or two seconds below that fourteen thirty four. So I, it's going to be exciting to see. I think we're going to see the first sub fourteen thirty by an American woman in this race, mm-hmm. and I think it's going to be Shelby Houlihan. But Krista Schweizer is going to be right there. Her eight twenty five in the three thousand converts. If you use the IAAF scoring tables, which aren't perfect, but that converts to fourteen twenty eight, fourteen twenty nine. We know they're in shape. All their teammates mm-hmm. are in shape. They just ran a four hundred two fifteen hundred by themselves. And you have no shortage of pacers here. You just had Courtney Frerichs run 1450. You had Elise Cranny run 1448. They have all sorts of people that can make sure they can go through 4,000 meters on American record pace. And then they have each other to run with over that last K. And I've been hearing rumors that Shelby is just in ridiculous shape. Now, you might ask yourself, when has Shelby Houlihan not been in ridiculous shape? And I would say, touche, you probably are correct. She's probably perpetually in insane yeah. shape for the last couple of years. But when she ran the 1434, that was 2018 Shelby Houlihan. I think 2020 mm-hmm. Shelby Houlihan is even better. I think her record is gone. I think Schweizer is going to break it as well. I like Houlihan for the win, but I think, and I think she's going to go under 1430, um, a little bit of a milestone that we're going to see on Friday night in Portland. What was this? What what does this say about Swizer if she manages to beat Houlihan again? I know five thousand is her distance, but you could argue it's also mm-hmm. Shelby's distance because she basically owns you know it can claim to be elite in any distance from fifteen hundred to five k. Uh, we've established that Swizer is is somebody who can maybe makes make some noise at an international final. But this would be even more significant, obviously, than her American record indoors if she can beat Shelby Houlihan, beat her record, and and get under. You know, I mean, even if she breaks it by a, a tick, it's 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 significant. But you know, yeah. this this would be to me. It, no, I'm not saying at all that the the Boston race was a fluke. It wasn't. But this is like this would be on a whole other level than the 825 to me. Not only because of the the, yeah. the timing coming in a season that's not really a season, but for her to to really validate that that performance from from February and and to do it and to take a record that's owned by the other person in the race would be huge and uh would put her in a real position i think to 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 be somebody who can finish top 3 at the olympic games we know that's hard it's never been done on the women's the women's side uh for americans but i this is another chance for her to make a real real, real big statement and no. I don't well, know. It's it's. I mean, I'm gonna be fascinated if if Houlihan comes out and just just like just all all you know blood, sweat, and tears to make sure she does not lose to Swizer again. I know they're friendly, but I, I I you're gonna see a a serious game face on the start line like Shelby Houlihan's run in an Olympic final. I think to to make sure Swizer doesn't one up her again. Yeah, and it, I think it's more significant. You're right than indoors. Number one, it's outdoors, and number yeah, two. Right, right. Right. It's it's five thousand. It's mm-hmm. it's a championship distance. So I, I think mm-hmm. both those things combined. Forget the fact that 
we're in the midst of a, a canceled season or a stalled out season, put, put that aside, you're still getting two of the best, two of the top, if not the top two women's 5,000 meter runners in the country, certainly two of the top three. And they happen to be in the same spot in the same race with a perfectly set up paced race. And you're going to have what I assume to be great conditions, unless there's some sort of freak weather situation in Portland that blows in in the next day or two. There's there's no way this does not go fast. And mm-hmm. yes, the 1434 was an incredible time, and she took a couple seconds off the old American record, and she had Shalane Flanagan helping to pace her. But I, I just think Houlihan's a different runner now. She's better. Mm-hmm. Obviously, having Schweizer there is only going to help her. We know Houlihan feeds off of that competition, and the fact that she got beat – the last time uh, they raced with a record on the line. Now, Shelby beat her in the 1500, but that's Shelby's more Shelby's domain. If she needed any more motivation, she has it. I don't think she needs any more motivation, and that's why I think we're going to see a sub 1430. And then after this, we're going to be so frustrated that she can't do the 15-5 double at the Olympics next year, which ties into my rant yesterday, which people can go tune back into mm. about, about yeah. doubles. Don't, don't want to get into that again, but... I think we're just going to um, – Schweizer's going to continue her ascent as a a top top five threat. And I think you're, we're going to look at Shelby as someone who could potentially medal in both if she had the opportunity. That's yeah. what the result yeah. would be from this meet. What, <clears throat> what obstacles do you think – are in the way of them going under this this time. I mean, would it just be conditions? I mean, you seem pretty sure that they're going to get under this. And, you know, Swizer ran the 1445 last year when she was on the come up, you know, well, still on the come up and not the name we, not the athlete even now, eight months later that we think she is or that we know she is. So, but do, I mean, do you see any, well, I guess the, the, the clearer question is what chance do you give them to, to break this record? At least one of them. I mean, I think it's going to happen. And so I would put, nothing's 100%. It's an American record for the reason, but I, I would yeah. put it above 50%, right? I would put it closer yeah. to, to 75% and I would put a, a tick over 50 that that they're going to go under 14.30 or at least one of them is going to go under yeah. 14.30. I just, you look at the race in Belgium when she ran 14.34 and you look at what this race is going to be. How different are they, really? That was in a That's non-championship true. year. They were overseas, but it was just a time trial setup. This is also a time trial set up as well but there's been much i'm guessing more ability to plan and mold this and craft this attempt because it's been the only focus of of the year right. she's two years she's two years better from what she's done before they have much more options in terms of pacing so if one person's off in terms of pacing if someone decides to go full donovan brazier on craig angles <laughs> then you have the next woman up who can run a 5k in 1450 so they can certainly pace for a 1430 over 3k or three and a half kilometers yeah and you have the Schwe- and you have the schweizer factor there too mm-hmm. and schweizer has the shelby factor they have each other to race i guess the only thing i could see getting in the way here is sometimes and this is a counterintuitive point but sometimes this happens there's too much competition for a record and they start just keying off of each other in those mm-hmm. last two laps and start playing some games and and maybe the pace gets a little bit slower because they're measuring up for a final kick. But I don't think that's going to happen because I think the pacing is going to go for so long. The table is going to already be set. No one's going to want to slow down that late in the race and measure this thing out. Certainly not Schweizer, right? She was all she was all gas in that in that three k. Yeah, in and that's that's yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, not that they were ever off pace in Boston, but you know, she, t- she took the onus on herself and the, and kind of the risk in hindsight of, um, mm-hmm. going out in front of Shelby. And we all thought, oh, this is going to set up perfectly for Shelby's kick. I don't really know. There's not a perfect model of how to defend against it. Um, I guess she was wise to try to get out in front of it, but that shows you, I think that, you know, she's not going to be scared of, of, you know, she's going to go for the record first and, and deal with, with Houlihan second. Right. Uh, and, yeah. and, and have, the, and have the confidence to know that she did outkick her in a, in a 3000, which you would think would be closer to Houlihan's strength down because the 1500 is her best distance. So I, I don't foresee that happening. I'm not probably as bullish as far as 70 up in the 70%. I'd put it more at a 50, 50 effort. I mean, 
fourteen thirty four is a is a tough time to crack. I mean that you know mm -hmm. that is difficult to to run that fast. I think especially when I, I do think yes you know they ran that that four oh two and yes they ran well indoors. But I I, I am kind of a believer that the lack of a season, the lack of other racing scenarios, even though they're race, you know, doing simulations in practice, I think that has a bigger impact than maybe we're giving credit. Yes, I know, you know, the the their teammates ran what fast. What were you watching last week? Did no, you watch Donovan I, Brazier? I, I'm not saying about Donovan Brazier. I I mean, I think Donovan Brazier was ready to run that. You know, was was would have ripped something fast last year. I I just think I I, I don't want to hand them the record right away I, I i think 1434 is hard to run i i and, yeah, and of course I, I think they'll come close um and and you know i could see it being one way or the other i don't i i definitely don't see anybody going under 1430 I, I um i think it's 50 50 to break the record and i think if they do it's going to be a hair under but I, I could be way wrong I, I don't know i just i'm i guess i'm a little surprised just to hear you that confident but you do look at the, the times they've run otherwise, all the, the rest of their resume, and it does equate to faster four or 5,000. So I could see that point. I just think there will be some factors that 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 make it a coin flip. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out soon. I On the men's side of things, I, I mean, did you see any way Mohamed doesn't break 13? I just, the way no, everybody no, no, has no. been running, the way everybody's been running, it's you have to prove to me that you're not in shape as opposed to you have to prove mm -hmm. to me that you're in shape. Everybody just seems raring to go. And that's another race, right, where they have so many people that can pace. McGordy, right. Fish, like they, they can – all those guys can run 13-minute pace for, for four kilometers. Woody yeah. Kincaid, you know, I, I don't know who's running it and who's pacing it, but – I think that's something that you really need to factor in here is just the amount of control that they have, the, the lack of thinking that all these people are trying to, that all these people who are trying to run fast can put in this, whether it's Schweizer, whether it's Houlihan, whether it's Lamong or Ahmed, they really can just completely turn their brain off and, and run this race because they have their teammates out there that they trust to take them around to a fast time. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, maybe, maybe even Evan Jager is going to pace. I'm not sure, but they have just so many people who could, set this up for a sub 13 minute run yeah in their in their instagram caption they it seems like they're suggesting when they say the favor gets returned and they mention evan jager and ryan hill so maybe those guys are gonna uh like they say return the favor <clears throat> and get out, get out there and pace i i do i have to commend the bowerman track club you know they uh they're probably the coolest distance squad in in the us if not the world but they're i don't know who writes their instagram captions but I admire that they're kind of nerdy. Like they're not, they're like the cool what do you mean? kid. Well, this week the favor gets returned. Word on the street is the pace will be pepper emoji. Like if I did that, if I wrote something like that, like, Spicy? like hey, look at me in my hat. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know. And then they use the word switcheroo. Who uses, uh -huh. now I realized I ended, I ended a podcast last week by saying, see you on the flip side, <laughs> which I had to go. I, I immediately went and punched myself out? in the face. But did you edit switch a roo? What's that? Did you edit it out? No, I left. I left. See you on the flip side in there. That's, real, that's an appropriate motto. That's a Scoops uh, Callahan moment there. Real yeah. switch a roo for the men and women in red and black. I don't know. I just think it's funny. I mean, I think it's just like a little nerdy. It's like it's. I don't know. It's just funny. It's yeah. clearly like not a. It's not a. A young, I mean, it might be like a thirty-year-old. Do I don't know who it is, uh, it, who writes her captions. You may know Ida, but but it's not like know. a it's not a nineteen-year-old influencer who's writing their captions. It's clearly like a thirty-year-old trying to be hip. Is what I'm. It's like if yeah. if I was well, no, the Bowerman. If you're trying to be hip, would you say switcheroo? Though I think it's a thirty-year-old being a thirty-year-old. I think that's what it is. Right. That's what, what if I'm they saying. put? I just think, what if yeah, what if the weather got really bad? No, the, the, I'm I'm just anticipating the next caption. The weather got really bad, and they were worried about mm -hmm. running fast, but they still did. And then they're like, "We found ourselves in a real pickle." I mean, that's we that's exactly what this is. is. Yep. Uh, shout out that's to them. Exactly. Um, okay, so final. Well, I guess you you can predict again tomorrow, so you can wait. You can wait to make your predictions until you you get even closer mm -hmm. to 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 race time. But I said it. I okay. think I think Shelby's gonna I think Shelby's gonna break the record. I think both women are gonna go under. I think Shelby's gonna run under 1430. Wow. Sticking to it. Mm -hmm. I think I think Lamong I think Lamong and Ahmed at least one's gonna go under 13. I know that's not as bold. I 
I mean, if Le- LeMond ran 12.55, would that surprise you? No, and I, I was going to say, I mean, that's 12.55, like I talked said at the beginning, would be very good. And then if you're thinking he's in 12.55 shape, I looked it up. The American record, Bernard Lagat, 12.53.60. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be, I would put that at under 10% likelihood that he that gets under that one because that, that record's yeah. nine years old. But I mean, last year they ran way faster than I, like that, that, the, the meet with Kincaid and Centro and every, or the race with Centro and those, I mean, those, that, that opened my eyes and I think opened the team's eyes to what can be possible in a time trial. Actually, probably opened the, the country's eyes, you know, all, all training groups mm-hmm. now that are during this time doing these team time trials. I think it opened, uh, eyes to how fast you can go. And so I guess I wouldn't put it out of the question. He ran 13 flat. That was a year ago. He's been very good since. Um, mm-hmm. it, there's a chance way, way less, of course, than than the women. But if you're talking about somebody who can maybe run 12 to 55, well, you're a second and a half away from the American record. So we'll see. Well, and Ahmed is a good person to have because clearly he he doesn't really yeah. need, he can be the pacer. He doesn't need pacers, but he's going to benefit even more by just hopping on uh for the ride there i i want to i want to introduce one more possibility of the fast times and the records not happening if people scratch which is an mm. obvious statement but there's always that chance because i know they have other meets scheduled later on this summer it's there's a chance somebody doesn't excuse me feel like giving it a go and they just say all right we got two more attempts to two more times three more times whatever we can schedule these whenever and 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 we'll do it later that's that always you always have to have that possibility in track and field but the 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 pepper emoji has already been unleashed on instagram people are expecting a a spicy (laughs) record attempt do not let the the, rue has already been switched you can't unru the rue yeah exactly it's switched so uh i wouldn't i wouldn't anticipate that at, at this at this moment uh it's good that Bowerman Track Club is working against their reputation in the past of never racing. Uh, it, now they're they're leading the charge here, building a a, a a new tradition with the Bowerman Track Club of just racing each other. Uh, pretty soon, are they going to ignore <laughs> the Olympics and, and U.S. Championships and they only race each other? That well, no, the the, the U.S. Championships become whatever Bowerman yeah. is. That's Bowerman the is, that they yeah. say they yeah. they secede. They become their own governing body. And and do we do they are they like a higher they're like a higher level than the U.S. national mm-hmm. team? It's like we get to send so we have the U.S. team and then we have the Bowerman TC team mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that goes and they're like they're, they're the best of the best from the United States. They're like six A, and then everybody mm-hmm. else is going to be like the five A four A in in your yeah. state meet. They yeah, they, yeah. or they can send or they're the they're the power region that that sends two mm-hmm. and then USA's sends one what do you think it, if brazier does another one of these meets in the in the julian time trial which is a different league a different federation what yeah. would you like to see brazier run would you like to see him run another 1500 or an 800 no an 800 i i you know they're literally gonna have to have michael norman pace him through the first 400 i don't know how <laughs> like craig, craig, nobody... Engels is, is craig Engels gonna yeah. return the favor with the old switcheroo yeah <laughs> I, I don't think craig can return the favor uh no, I, I want to see Brazier in an 800 versus Nigel Amos. That's what I want to see. But I don't think I don't think Amos wants that smoke. But uh, mm-hmm. but that's what I want to see. We got an email here from from David who says he enjoyed the discussion of Brazier's potential for the double. Peter Snell, as you mentioned, like was the last man to do the double at the Olympics. But don't forget Kelly Holmes on the women's side. Also mm, fun to think yeah. about people who didn't do it and why not. So uh, people who didn't do it and why not. Jim Ryan, Sebco, Dave Waddle, Steve Ovet, Clayton Murphy. And Caster Semenya, a fascinating topic, especially for those of us old enough to have seen Peter Snell. I mean, uh, yeah, I was not Mac- like the man, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, McLuffy almost did it in Rio. I mean, he he got double silver, right? Well, and Semenya goes uh, in yeah. 2017, wins wins the eight uh, after she had gotten 1500 meter bronze. Now she wasn't that close to Faith Kipyegon. And no. Faith Kipyegon, just just a superior fifteen hundred meter runner in the U.S. The most famous one recently for uh, at the U.S. trials was was Clayton Murphy, which I like that he went for it. I know it didn't work out, yeah. but I, I like that he went for it. He, I think he had the potential to to do both. It didn't it didn't and go I, that way, but I think yeah, I I do think that 
there, there could be a, an impact for this generation on, I don't know how well athletes keep other athletes performances in the back of their mind, but considering that fell apart for him to the point where he, what he ended up like scratching the 800 final or scratching the 1500 final or something like that. Uh, I, I just wonder if that plays in the back of athletes like Brazier's mind, like, you know, even with the schedule, I think the eight, you know, at the trials it's, it's, it's uh, hospitable like, to a double. Uh, you wonder if it's like, oof, I don't know. Somebody who was coming off a bronze medal, you know, fell flat mm-hmm. trying to do this. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't. I hope not because I think the schedule is is much better. Um, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. Well, I was looking at the comments to our last post, which you should never do, where mm-hmm. it was – what did you title it? Like, should Brazier do the 800, 1500 double at the trials? And there's a lot of people who aren't that much fun at parties. I'll just say in there. Yeah. It's just like, no, it's like, okay. All right, cool. Dream, dream, dream a little bit. Like, yeah, I get if you're his man, if you're his manager or his agent and you're in the comments, I get yeah. saying it, but if you're just a fan, why are you, yeah. why are you like, Hey, I don't want to see this awesome talent run more events. I would prefer not to I, see that. I don't get I mean, it. I don't a, get it from a fan's perspective. A guy that was on a four by four and didn't run cross country in college, and we were talking mm-hmm. about he could be a he'd be elite on a world stage at 1500, uh, 1500 meter. He's he's one of a kind. Yeah. He's he's this is a talent in Brazier that we're uh, you know he, he he's already the best uh, maybe not career longevity. He's already the best eight hundred meter runner in U.S. history, mm-hmm. but based on based on time and getting that gold medal. And he's freaking mm-hmm. 22 or 23. And he just ran a 335 while not trying. So let's be excited about that. I don't want to see it. No, no, no. I mean, that's, no. Like, that's like if you're Bill Gates and coming in and it's like, hey, should I should I uh, double major in computer? And I know this is a moot point because he, he, he uh, pulled out of college to start a very successful computer company. Don't but, explain the bit. Just go. Don't explain the bit. Just go. go I'm just go. saying we'll it's like if it's like Bill Gates, and, should I major in in uh, computer science and business? Slow down, Bill. That's not fun. Just do <laughs> computer science. Like, why would you also want to be adept at business? Like, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, no, like what? We're not asking. I'm not asking him. I'm not like saying like he's Donovan Brazier stinks if he doesn't do this. But it's a whole. It's a whole lot more fun. Have have your cake and eat it too. I mean, like it is, it, yeah. it's just yeah. Have fun with it. I don't know. I mean, the internet is a place for trolls. We know that. But it, 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 none of the comments were horrendous. I'm not saying that. But it's like, I mean, if you can run two events, that's that's really fun, right? That's you you get yeah. double well, the gold if, medals if, if you win. If you're a fan. I don't know why it's like yeah. people are like, do you want to see, do you want to see LeBron James play 30 minutes or 40 minutes? No, I yeah. think he needs to pump the brakes a little yeah. bit here and think yeah. about how, how yeah. that's going to affect his that's team. Exactly right. performance the people stuff. who said no, they're like load management fans. They're like, Kawhi, yeah. get on the yeah. bench, man. My man, <laughs> love you on the bench. I want to see, us. I want to see Zion play four minutes a game and yeah. no more than that yeah. because I'm, well, everybody's a GM now right that's so. that's what everybody is i mm-hmm. yeah it was uh it wasn't that disheartening but I, I i just thought it was funny of just like well why would he do this i don't know because he could win both uh, of them uh, <laughs> why do you do why do you do what sport i mean the, there's risk in every element of sports right, right? Yeah. I mean, there's no nothing is going to be completely yeah there's no perfect straight line like what if he goes and wins the you know go, goes to a I almost said Rio for the Olympics goes to Tokyo and wins the 800 easily. And then the 1500 is run in some ridiculously slow time or Timothy cherry gets hurt or Inga Britson focuses on the 5,000 yeah. and there was just this wide open path. And then by the time he has the opportunity to do it again, uh, th- things have, have changed. There's a, maybe there's a Rhodesia type figure who's running 140. Yeah. Maybe Gordon's yeah. prophecy about Emmanuel career running 139 comes finally through. comes through. Finally comes through. Uh, By the way, can we get yeah. Gordon to commentate the Shelby Carissa race? It just doesn't feel oh, right man. to have a, a record attempt. Well, the question everyone's asking is Shelby going to be aching uh, it, again? I, that's what I'm worried about. That's we saw when she was aching, and uh, Gordon called it out perfectly. Do you remember where we were when we watched that last time? Yeah, uh, our, Ad- what, dingy, dingy Atlanta hotel room. That's right. For the for trials. The, yeah. Marathon trials, yeah. And they yeah, Carissa yeah. Schweizer stole the show. Stole the show. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the Ivy League real quick before we do two more emails at the end. 
and everybody knows by now Ivy's have canceled fall sports. No word on whether or not yet they will push them to the spring. For instance, will they will there be a cross country season in the spring? Will there be a football season in the spring? That much we do not know as of this recording. But this combined with Stanford cutting 11 sports yesterday was not a promising development, Lincoln. Well, no, I mean, when you see the institutions that you think of, of being flush and cash, I mean, Stanford's thing was was very surprising to me, even in the current environment. Uh, I mean, yeah. this isn't this isn't a, a state school. This is a private institution that you think of as having very powerful, you know, big, big donors that this should never happen to. Uh, but them coming to cutting 11 sports in the Ivy League, you know, when you talk about moving fall sports to spring, and that seems contingent on the fact that the rest of the NCAA would do that. What's the point of Princeton running mm -hmm. cross country in the spring if nobody else is, right? I mean, that's that's not going to happen. Maybe other sports are, are different, um, and maybe they just want to have an in-conference season for other sports. I don't know. That doesn't seem very appealing to me, but... If we think back to the spring, the Ivy League, a day before the NCAA made their announcement, the Ivy League said, we're not going to have any championships in, in the spring due to the coronavirus. And then one one day later, the NCAA wiped out the entire season. To me, this had the feel on some levels of being the, the precursor to what ultimately will happen, which is a pretty much a widespread canceled fall. That said, I do think this is a little bit different, as was pointed out by by people as this was circulating the internet yesterday we we know that power five schools need to play need to play football there's big incentives financially that maybe the ivy league doesn't have to have football and in that regard it it's not you would think it's not quite yet the death didn't they have incentives to play basketball though didn't they have incentives yeah you're to play right basketball? you're right you're right you're right i yeah that's a good point um but I get with, that the they, they did, it's a they, different different stage of the vi the virus or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's worse. <laughs> well, I mean, just our our understanding of it, though, right? Like, yeah, and yeah. yes, yeah. You're, you're right. The number of the number of cases, uh, not not with. I know it's hard to separate that from it, but just the fact of like, well, at least we know more about it. I guess that would be mm -hmm. one 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 major difference. But I well, and major the are coming tournament. back, right? Major yeah, sports exactly. are coming back, but the problem, the problem, of course, is are you going to have these students in class? I mean, that that just seems impossible unless you can social distance. Everyone wears a mask. Uh, I mean, are you going to have people sharing dorm rooms like so many logistical mm -hmm. things that are, you know, it, it seems impossible right now, given that it's July, July 9th and in, in a month mm -hmm. and in five weeks, essentially, kids would be going back to campus. I, you you can't introduce the whole host of people that have been in different places into dorm rooms. You're you're just asking for an explosion of cases. Um, and we can talk about oh the death rates going down. Well, regardless, I mean I think we've we we know that this anyone with their their head screwed on straight knows this is a dangerous virus, and we don't want these outbreaks on college campuses. And that that introduces the thing of how can we possibly have sports if we're not having classes or if the, if classes are online, people aren't on campus. So. Those are all the things getting back to the Ivy League. They they were they were ahead of the curve last time, and and you wonder if people are going to follow suit. And like you said yesterday, in your guys' pot, or you and Gordon, the uh, the topic of moving cross country to the spring has been has been broached. Uh, moving fall sports to the spring, and I, it seems like much more of a real possibility today than it was at the beginning of the day yesterday. Well, because they could still do it within this academic year. If you're talking about keeping. Mm -hmm money in in football you could still that's still yeah. feasible so if the choice is this or or no football or you start the season and then you have to cancel it midway through that gets yeah. that gets trickier i think that the issues all the struggle and the challenge has always been no sports without campuses open right that's what the the ncaa has said yeah. from the get-go those two yeah. things we're going to work together in in tandem and it seems, of course, like it's going to be an enormous challenge to open up these campuses. And you've seen different universities have different policies about how open they will be to try to get around it. But yeah, you also get the feeling of who was going to be the first one to do it. And now it's the Ivy League. Okay, people would mm -hmm. say, based on what happened in the spring, that that wasn't a surprising development. But 
I think once we get a second conference or when we get a second conference, then we're going to see even more um, momentum for this because right. I know some football programs have had um, have had good luck and have had no cases in in their groups that have tested uh, that, that that have come onto campus, but that hasn't been the case with everybody. And then what happens in, yeah. in a month or two months when there's students there again, how do you do the dorms, uh, the dining halls, et cetera, et cetera. You yeah. just look at, you just look at all the things the NBA is doing to keep their bubble secure. Right. And if that's the standard for what you have to do is that's impossible to meet. Right. It's impossible right. for ev for every single college campus to meet that the cost is not worth the, the, like they don't, they can't pay that cost. Let's just say it, it's a, it's a, it's a number. It's a, it's, it's not feasible basically for every single college right. campus to do, to do what the NBA is doing. I was listening to a, about a Brian Windhorst basketball podcast and he was uh, interviewing uh, Malika Andrews, who is going in the bubble. She's reporting from the bubble. Did you listen to this podcast? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. She, she, and she was and Brian was like, what do you have to do in the bubble? And she's she can't leave her room for the first several days while she's tested. She's tested once a day. They drop off food to her. They don't want, even want anybody rummaging through the food. So she gets all of the food, like all the options. They bring her all the options for every single meal every day just because they don't want somebody saying, okay, well, this person's a vegetarian, so let's take out this this option. They don't need this. So she just, just oh has a hotel. A hotel and, and again, she leaves. Uh, and now I don't know. I haven't checked in with, with with the status, but assuming she had a series of of negative tests, then she'd be able she could go out a little bit more. But she's literally in her dorm room, or not her dorm room, her hotel room, for these first several days. And I get yeah. the NBA has has a huge financial stake in this, but so does so does college football, right? Yeah. And if that's if that's what the NBA has deemed the the appropriate way to maintain safety, that really ups the ante for what these other uh, organizations and institutions would have to do. Yeah. And we don't know the threshold either for the, even with all those precautions, you, you know, there's going to be positive tests within the bubble yeah. and the same will be with, with, with baseball. It's too much to ask for athletes to, for, for individuals, every individual to adhere to the same guidelines. And it's also impossible just to avoid the risk of this coronavirus. It spreads really easily, obviously. The question is, what is the threshold of acceptable positive tests? And, you know, I, we don't know that answer. Is, is 10, mm -hmm. is, is if you have, let's say, a cross country team and you have 15 runners, um, is two of them testing positive? You know, is that is that enough to be mm -hmm. like we're not running yeah. anymore? Like, is is five? Is it a fifty percent positive rate? I mean, you know, or is it a, is it school wide? Is it if ten percent of the student body has the coronavirus, then we cease all things? We don't know that. And there was a time in in April where it was like they'll figure out down the road that they'll they'll figure that out later on the road. Well, we've reached that point in the road. We've reached the fork, and it's like we still don't know. I obviously I'm not inside school president's offices, I, they're having these serious conversations, but yeah, they're either going to have to, to me, they're either going to have to relax the rules of, of being on campus is, is contingent on competing, or they're not going to have this at all, because I don't think you can be on campus right now. If you're, if you're really focused on not spreading the coronavirus. Well, it, yeah, at, at full capacity. Right. And that's what Gordon was talking about yeah. yesterday. It's like, well, you could create a bubble just with your athletes on campus, but they, that's, that's not what they said they want to do and that's not college right and then everybody's yeah no. thinking well uh, yeah that's a that's a tough spot to be in we got an email from from lynn who said well could they keep cross in the fall it's just because it's lower risk than football and mm -hmm. i don't think that's gonna i think it's just gonna be a blanket no. sports decision right yeah i think that's yeah, that's, that's a feeling i've been getting yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no it's Absolutely. I mean, what 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 financial incentive do you have? Great news, guys! Football's canceled, soccer's canceled, cross country's on though, baby. What's up, tailgate in Terre Haute? Like, that's not going to happen. I mean, that's just that. There's no there's no financial no incentive for the institutions to do that. Uh, I know, but I just yeah. tailgate in Terre Haute so comes off the tongue a little better. Sorry, Kevin. Um, did the old switcheroo on me there with the event yeah. side? 
Uh, so it's all, as we've known for months, it's all going to be dependent on football and, and, right. and it's football and the coronavirus. That's what we're, and that's what we're focused on. I, I, I yeah. just, I think the Ivy league took the first step to what the rest of the NCAA is going to, going to do, but we'll see. Yeah. Stay tuned. It does feel eerily similar to the spring yeah. where mm-hmm. in February we were in Atlanta and people were asking mm-hmm. questions about it. And they're like, ah, oh, no, the Olympics will be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, right. then, and then each, each day went by. It's like, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. And then even the day before indoor, like I got on a plane flying to indoors thinking there'd be at least a 50% chance that some that there would be a meet. And then, yeah. and then even then I didn't think outdoors would be canceled. So I'm, I'm approaching this with a lot of humility that I do not know. And I'm not going we don't to know. predict. Yeah make, predict. yeah. make predictions. Yeah. Let's close out the show. We got an email from uh, the three sisters in Utah. Uh, oh, yes. Chris, missing them. Kristen, Melody, and Marissa, who famously all had the same injury at the same time mm-hmm. and have been updating us with their progress. She says, Dear Kevin and Lincoln, not Gordon Mack, because you said that Connor Manson, Casey Klinger's 3,200 meter time trial wasn't good enough for your standards and because tradition. <laughs> yeah, Gordon is very, he's an elitist. So he's yeah. an elitist if you haven't you haven't figured that out yet. There should be three people at the Olympics in each event. And that's <laughs> it. Uh, so they they did their they did they made their Olympics. They made they they did their competition that they were gonna do. So, so oh, we appreciate oh, yeah, your support yeah. in spon- in sponsorship. In that regard, Kristen received a very important email a few weeks ago announcing that Flow Sports Shop has arrived. Hopefully that will help with the availability of extra small or small t shirts for us. <laughs> you gotta get on that, Lincoln. Uh, okay. so they're calling. They're calling it. The, they're calling it the Cripple Olympics has taken place, and we're giving you the first look. We're attaching a photo release form due to your help, starring as the cardboard cutouts in the person carrying contest. <laughs> there it is. In terms of cardboard cutouts, uh, Kirsten got Lincoln because they're both a little crazy about social distancing and all this COVID stuff, and so she felt confident that he would not give her coronavirus during the event. Uh, we we know each other. So, yeah. Good. yeah. Because she's so berserk about social distancing, she won't let us hang out with friends. And because uh, we are cripples, we can't go on a run or do any exercise because of physical, physical therapy. We resorted to going on many walks uh, every day. One time we were going on our walk and we had cocoa puffs. Note, our house never has any sugar cereal in it at all. Our only prepared cereals are cornflakes and Cheerios, not even honey nut ones. This prize bowl of cocoa puffs being carried by Marissa was our allotment of sugar for the month. We almost reached the corner of our block. When Kirsten saw a little bitty teeny tiny snake and jumped so high, scared Marissa to death, and somehow Marissa was able to hold on to the bowl but spill all the cocoa puffs on the sidewalk, every last ball of goodness. And because Kirsten is so crazy, she wouldn't let Melody and Marissa eat them off the ground just in case someone with coronavirus had happened to come by and lick the sidewalk. That's true. That anyway, happened. She says, back to the Olympics. Summary of the events. Opening ceremonies. Marissa gives private gargling lesson, including via Zoom, in case your son wants to learn Lincoln. We know you appreciate mm. the fine arts. Uh, tuna fish tossing. Melody broke the tuna fish on the very first throw, and Marissa fell off the rolly chair. Not sure how that works. Person carrying okay. competition. Carson Falls started because she was so excited when the gun went off, she forgot she wasn't supposed to run. Melody shoved Kirsten off the rock wall and broke Gordon's leg. Lincoln was the only one who <laughs> came through with all four limbs remaining. Uh, Agua slurping. Marissa pulled the Nike, pushed the rules a little bit far, but came out with the wind. Long distance <laughs> spitting. Goodness, watch the footage, laugh really hard at Kristen. Equestrian uh, with archery while writing this email. Marissa is still bitter at missing the stinking target twice, which allowed Kristen to get the gold. Extreme bobbing for apples. Kristen was first to go. And if you want to see someone transfer a gallon of water from a bucket onto the ground using only her mouth, watch Kristen's. If you want to see someone look like death, watch Melody's. Marissa looked better than normal. Uh, Rubber duck bathtub race. Melody suffocated two of the contestants and pulled away with the win. Water bottle flipping. Again, goodness, watch the footage. Laugh really hard at Kristen. Origami boat floating. Marissa passed kindergarten in 2010, and her coloring skills come through strong. Ice cube melting. Kristen didn't know she was cheating by swallowing some ice until after the competition was over because Melody and Marissa felt so bad for her, they allowed her to keep the gold. And then the closing ceremonies, Melody almost got a concussion and felt like crap. Haha, get it. Uh, that gold toilet seat was heavy. 
Marissa's silver toilet seat almost fell off her head, and Kristen was just happy to be on the podium. Overall, our Olympics turned out very fine, and we hope you enjoy. And uh, they sent the YouTube link here, Lincoln, so you can relive. Oh. 37 minutes. 37 minutes. Oh, man. All that action condensed to 37, uh, 37 minutes. So pretty exciting here. And again, yeah, features the, the cardboard cutout of uh, – Listen – Go ahead. Of, uh, of, uh, people were excited when we had Christian Coleman on the show. I mean, that was real hard news. But I, I think this is all, you know, heading towards our most famous guest, which would be the three sisters from Utah coming on and discussing, <laughs> one, how they they must listen so much. I mean, it's it's shocking to have that level of, of fandom. I, I don't think any of my ideas, maybe they don't like me specifically, but any of my ideas about track and field are, are that revelatory. But it's great to have them as listeners. I may check out some of this, some of this YouTube footage of of their the three sisters and their Olympic games. This is exciting. I, I, I'm interested to see if, if there's really a cardboard cutout of myself. I'm quite interested to check that out. I don't want to give any spoilers. Just you got to tune in. You you have 37 minutes available. Do it in between breaks of the uh, Inspiration Games. That's you, true. You'll be able to fit it in. That's true. Second yep. screen that's, experience. How about that? It, that's exactly right. I'm. You're right. I've I've set my afternoon now. Noah Lyles and the three sisters from Utah. That's I, I'm ready to go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll leave it there. Flowtrackpodcast at gmail dot com. You can write in. Um, actually, they they have a, a a note here on what I should say at the end. Let's see. Oh God. When you give your email address and say email us with your questions and comments, you should add email us with your question, comments, and embarrassing stories. So there you oh. go. Okay. That's a good idea. Ta-da. Yeah. Yeah. Flowtrackpodcast at, at gmail.com. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe embarrassing running stories from during the mm-hmm. pandemic or pre-pandemic or any any time in your life. Gordon and Lincoln will be back tomorrow to recap the Inspiration Games. Spoiler alert. Gordon was not impressed. Not impressed with the Inspiration what Games. The lineup of the meet? No, I'm just yeah, saying tomorrow he's not going to be impressed. Whatever happens today, uh, I'm, I'm breaking. Yeah, I'm no, calling no my lies. shots on this episode, Lincoln. I'm calling yeah, my shots. Shelby Hulahan, 1428. Gordon Mack, not impressed. Yeah, no. Is th- is that fast though? Is that <laughs> good? <laughs> yeah, that's, like Gordon, that's you're in, right. You're in 19-2 by himself. But <laughs> how good is that? Yeah. Is that fast? <laughs> All right. <laughs> just think. All right. Thanks to Alon for producing. Thank you to Lincoln for co-hosting. Thanks, everybody, for writing in. We'll talk to you guys next time.